الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد In our previous class we have been reading in the chapter the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى باب صفة صلاة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم The chapter with regards to the clarification of the description of the prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have read the first narration, the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, clarifying one of the istiftahat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the opening supplications. This evening, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we discuss another supplication. It is not found in Umdat al-Ahkam, but we add this supplication and the explanation of this particular opening supplication because of uh, how well known it is and uh, the, that many of the believers have memorized it and they recite it in their prayer. So we clarify this, uh, this hadith and this dua in order for a believer to learn its meanings and to be able to ponder over what one is reciting in the prayer and uh, hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see that the dua, dua istiftah, this is legislated in the beginning of the prayer. The dua, dua istiftah, it is legislated in the beginning of the prayer after, after takbirah al-ihram, after Takbirah al-Ihram, but before the recitation of al-Fatiha. The people of knowledge, they mention as-salah laha miftahun wa ftitahun wa stiftah. That the prayer, it has a miftah, it has a key. It has a key. And likewise, it has iftitah, and it has a manner in which it is begun, and one enters into it. And likewise, it has istiftah, and the opening affair of that. And uh, as for the miftah, or the key of the salah, then this is purification, tahara, ablution, and purification of the body, and likewise the removal of the hadith, and of the filth from the body and the clothing, and from and from the area that one is praying in, and likewise removing and likewise re- removing the foul intentions and purifying the intention for the sake of Allah alone. Miftahu as-salati at-tahara. And as for iftitahu as-salah, and how the salat is began and how one enters into the prayer, then this is by making takbirah al-ihram, by saying Allahu Akbar. By saying Allahu Akbar. And as for istiftahu as-salah, the opening supplication in the prayer and how one opens his prayer, then this is uh, with the supplication and with the remembrances uh, that have been legislated and established in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So therefore the prayer, it has a miftah, wuftitah, wustiftah. It has a key, which is tahara. And it has a manner that it is began and one enters into the prayer and that is with takbir. Allahu Akbar. And then it has likewise an opening. And before one goes directly into the prayer, he, he opens it with supplication and with remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal and with, uh, with dua. And with, with dua. It has been narrated from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Miftahu salati at tuhur wa tahrimuha at takbir wa tahriruha at tasneem. وتحريرها التسليم مفتاح الصلاة الطهور The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said the key to prayer is purification وتحريمها التكبير And its sacredness or entering into its, the sacredness of the prayer or the sanctity of the prayer meaning beginning and entering into the prayer and how it starts التكبير with the statement Allahu Akbar وتحريرها التسليم And it is closed and it is finished with التسليم with that taslim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, on the right and on the left. And this narration is connected by, by Abu Dawood, rahimahullahu ta'ala. So therefore, whenever an individual, he stands and he faces the qibla, and then he makes the takbir, he says, Allahu Akbar. At this time, he has entered into the prayer. 
And at this time, uh, many things that were allowed and permissible for before that were allowed and permissible for him before he entered their prayer, they, they now become impermissible. And this is why this takbira here is known as takbiratul ihram. Because now he enters into a state of hurma and a state of sacredness. And there are things that were permissible before that are not permissible now, like talking or eating and drinking or moving around. Because the one who enters into the state of a salah, it's not allowed for him to talk and to speak from their worldly affairs, nor to eat or to drink or to move around in the likes like this. But rather he must uh, restrict himself to the statements and the movements of the prayer, to the statements of the mo- and the movements of the prayer until he leaves that sacred state. Until he leaves that, that sacred state, the state of uh, salah, this hurma, by making tasneem and completing, and completing uh, the prayer, and completing the prayer. Whenever we think about the, how the prayer is opened and how one begins the salah, at takbir, at takbir, the statement Allahu Akbar. This is to affirm the greatness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His perfection. Allahu Akbar. Eh? Allahu Akbar min kulli shay. Allah, He is the greatest. He is greater than all things. Allah, He is the greatest. And He is greater. He is greater than all things. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is affirming for Him His greatness and His majesty and His glory and that He is greater and, power, more, and more powerful and strong than all things. And uh, likewise, uh, saying the statement, Allahu Akbar, also, this is freeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from every deficiency. Allah is greater than all of that. Allah, He has no deficiencies whatsoever. He's powerful and strong, and He's greater than all things. And He is greater than all things in His life and in His knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and His power and His authority. Allahu Akbar. So this statement here is affirming the greatness and the majesty and the power and the rule for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the decree for Him, and that He is free of all needs worthy of all praise subhanahu wa ta'ala he has no deficiency whatsoever and whenever one states this statement Allahu Akbar Allah, the, the individual he is singling Allah out for these affairs for this magnification and for this glory for this magnification and this praise and this glory alone for him subhanahu wa ta'ala so in this statement Allahu Akbar there is ta'zim wa takbir wa ijlal showing the glory and the magnificence and the greatness and believing in this that Allah he is the greatest and he is greater than all things and his authority it, it, it reigns and rules over all and all are under his command and under his control and under his decree and under his power subhanahu wa ta'ala and that all are from his creation and he is the creator of all things Allahu Akbar and he is alive and never dies and his existence it has no beginning nor end Allahu Akbar this is how a believer he, he begins the prayer and likewise this is how the message it began with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam likewise whenever he received messengership and he received a risala from that which was revealed to him in the very beginning Salawatullahi wa salamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi wa rabbaka fakabbir wa rabbaka fakabbir ay a'zimhu and he glorify him and, and, and magnify him subhanahu wa ta'ala and honor him uh, with tawheed by knowing him by his names and his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise by complying to his commandments and staying away from his prohibitions the believer whenever he enters into the prayer in this manner into the state of hurma in the sacred state of a salah he says Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allah is the greatest greater than all things and if a believer were to ponder over the prayer and in this manner of how one he enters into the salah with takbir, all of the actions and statements after this, they are all detailed clarification of the meaning of Allahu Akbar. The recitation of the words of Allah with humbleness and humility, looking down at the place of sujood, putting one's right hand on his left hand on his chest in the prayer and standing still, facing the qibla in this manner with humility and humbleness. He said, Allahu Akbar. All of the actions of the prayer after this are clarifying that, that Allah, He is the greatest. And this is the details of clarifying the magnification and the glory of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then after that, making the takbir again and declaring Allah to be the greatest, greater than all things, and then making ruku' and bowing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Him and glorifying Him. All of this is from the, from the magnification of Allah and the sujood and the lights like this and sitting in the jilsa. All of these actions here and the statements that are in the prayer, they're all the detailed clarification of the meaning Allahu Akbar and the application of what is required from that statement Allahu Akbar that Allah is the greatest 
meaning he's the own, only one worthy of worship, and there is none who are worthy is worthy of worship with him or besides him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and everything that is worshipped besides him is worshipped in falsehood and not worthy of worship because Allah, he is akibar, prostration and supplication and uh, ruku and bowing and the likes like this, humbleness and humility and uh, love and uh, hope and fear, this is for Allah alone, supplication and dua, this is for Allah alone because he is akibar, he is the greatest Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is some of the benefits with regards to uh, the miftah and the iftitah of the prayer. But as for the main topic, then this is al-istiftah. Then this is al-istiftah, the opening supplication of the prayer. So even after a believer, he purifies himself and he cleanses himself and he removes the filth from his body and his clothing in the place that he's going to pray. And likewise, he removes, he removes the hadith from himself, that spiritual impurity, and he prepares himself by cleansing, cleansing himself and, and likewise cleansing and purifying his intention. And he faces the qibla. And then after that, he makes the takbir, opening and entering into the salah. Likewise, he will not just hasten and begin. He will not just hasten and rush into the recitation of the Qur'an, but rather there is an opening before that. There is an opening before that of supplication and humbleness and humility and calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with love and fear and hope. And from that we have seen in the previous uh, dua, al-istiftah, from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, which consisted of al-istighfar which consisted of uh, humbleness and humility and and admitting one's sins and errors and shortcomings and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The supplication that we want to discuss this evening, uh, seeking Allah's aid and help, it has been narrated uh, in Surah Abi Dawood from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri and likewise from the hadith uh, from the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha and in her narration radiyallahu anha she said كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يستفتح الصلاة فيقول that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to make the opening supplication in his prayer and he would say and they would say the supplication that uh, that we will study. But likewise, this supplication also has been collected by Ali Imam Muslim, and it is from the Hadith of Umar radiAllahu anhu wa huwa maqufun alayhi. But it is ascribed to him radiAllahu anhu, and uh, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim. كان عمر رضي الله عنه يجهر بها أولئي الكلمات. That Umar he used to state these statements out loud, meaning in the prayer. And this is in order to teach the people. And this is an evidence here that it is allowed in the likes of these affairs to to state them out loud and to recite them out loud for a brief period of time or and until in order for the people to learn. In order for the people to learn. So one would be allowed to do this and he as a means to educate and teach the people, but one would not continue upon that way, but is allowed. And like this Umar, radiallahu anhu, he taught the people in this manner. But after the people have learned, then they also they will be taught that this is something that would be made silent. But he would recite it audibly, radiallahu anhu, in order to teach the people. How can he yaqulu? He used to say, and he would recite it out loud, and in, in order for the people to learn from him, radiallahu anhu, subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika, wa tabarak asmuka, wa ta'ala jadduka, and this is the same opening supplication here that Umar he is making and teaching the people. This is what is mentioned in the hadith of Abi Sa'id radiallahu anhu and likewise Aisha radiallahu anha. But in the, their narrations, it is ascribed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the uh, narrations in Sunan Abi Dawood, some of the people of knowledge have uh, found fault with some of the narrators in the chains. But uh, some of the people of knowledge likewise or others from them have mentioned that by looking at all of these narrations and collecting them together and the chains of these narrations, they have found that this narration is authentic and that the ascription to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is proper. And the fact that Umar radiallahu anhu, he would teach this to the people uh, in this manner is a sign that he learned it from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. From those who have authentic, who have authenticated that hadith and marfu'ah, yani the description of this narration to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Shaykh al-Adani, rahimahullahu 
Ta'ala, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So therefore, from the Ad'iyah, Al-Istiftah, from, from the opening supplications that one will recite in the prayer, is the statement of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka, wa la ilaha ghayruka. Meaning, uh, meaning, I glorify you, O oh Allah, with praises and thanks, and sanctify you, and blessed is your name, and lofty and high is your greatness and your majesty, and there is nothing worthy of worship beside you. And there is nothing worthy of worship beside you. So we see that in this particular supplication here, it consists of... Uh, the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the glorification of Him. There's no supplication for the servant or for the individual in this particular uh, dua. There is no asking or requesting for one's personal needs in this life or the hereafter. There's no seeking of forgiveness and the likes in this particular opening supplication. Rather, this uh, supplication here consists only of praise and magnification and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this aspect, many of the people of knowledge have mentioned that this is the most virtuous and the best of those supplications from them are Imam Ahmed and likewise uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and other than them, rahimahum Allah ta'ala, preferring this one because it consists only of pure praise and thanks and glory and magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, consisting of the most beloved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as well. At-tasbih, wa-tamheed, wa-takbir, wa at tahleel So we see that uh, a believer, he will open in this manner after stating the statement, Allahu Akbar, and entering into the prayer, and remembering the greatness of Allah, and, and praising Him in this manner, and glorifying Him, and entering into this sacred state, at after this, before reciting the Quran, one will recite this opening supplication. And from them, this narration here, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabaraka smuka, wa ta'ala jadduka, wa la ilaha ghayruka. Meaning, I glorify you, O Allah, with praises and thanks, and I sanctify you. And blessed is your name, and high and lofty is your greatness. And there is nothing worthy of worship except for except for you. So we see that uh, this supplication here, it consists of several statements. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, beginning with, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Well, I glorify you with praises and thanks and sanctify you. The people of knowledge, they mentioned, at tasbih it is uh, at tanzi at tasbih it means at tanzi Subhanaka ay usabbihuka. Tasbihan, meaning I glorify you. Unazihuka. A tanzi, it means to free Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from every defect and every fault. And uh, to make the tasbih or to say subhanallah, this is to glorify Allah and to free him from every fault and from every mistake or error or for every deficiency, from every deficiency. Subhanak Allahumma. Allahumma, we have seen that means Ya Allah. That means, Ya Allah. So, Subhanak Allahumma usabbihuka, Ya Allah. And unazihuka an al-naqais wal uyub. Meaning that I glorify you and that you are free from every defect and every fault. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has no faults or defects whatsoever in His life and in His knowledge and in His power and His authority and His wisdom and in His decree and none of His attributes or, or characteristics. He, he, he has no deficiency whatsoever and none of his attributes or characteristics, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is free from all of that. He is free from, from all of that. So we say, subhanak Allahumma, and this means to glorify Allah and to free him from every fault and every defect, and that he is perfect in his, in his life and perfect in all of his names and attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, no deficiency whatsoever from any from any aspect, from any aspect. Wa bihamdika, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. And uh, praising you, praising you and thanking you. Praising you and thanking you. So the people of knowledge, they mention alhamd, this is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to praise Him and to thank Him and to praise Him for His uh, beautiful names and attributes uh, of perfection, to praise Him because He has uh, a life of perfection and He never dies. 
and he is uh, free of all needs, and he has no wants whatsoever, and he needs nothing, yet all need him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he is the first, and there's nothing before him, and he is the last, and there's nothing after him, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and uh, that all things are in need of him, and that he feeds, and he is not fed, and that he is alive, and he never dies. الحي الذي لا يموت الأول الذي ليس قبله شيء والآخر الذي ليس بعده شيء وهو العلي العظيم and he is the most high and he is the most great there is nothing above him سبحانه وتعالى nor greater than him and he is the most powerful and the most strong and all are under his command and his authority and nothing happens in his in his kingdom except with his permission so he is praised for this he is praised for the subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is praised for his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection. But likewise, he is praised as well and thanked. He is praised as well and, and, and likewise thanked for his numerous blessings that cannot be counted and cannot be enumerated. And even if you were trying to, to, to try to count, and if you were to try to count the blessings of Allah, you could not enumerate them all. You cannot enumerate them all. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. So this means that I glorify you uh, with praises and thanks and sanctify you. Sanctify you meaning I believe that you have no deficiency and declare that you have no deficiencies and that you are pure and holy. So, uh, and, and, oh Allah, that you are pure and holy and you are the most high and lofty. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. And to praise Him likewise and to thank Him but alhamd, not only is it praise and thanks but this praise and thanks is coupled with love and magnification and veneration is coupled with love and magnification and, and veneration so that's how one will state this statement he wouldn't state this statement heedlessly and just move through the prayer like this and just move through the salat making statements and moving his lips but rather this is the purpose from learning uh, the meaning of the statement so that one can say them and ponder over what they mean and that his heart can be alive while he states the statement subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik that one he will say that subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik that I glorify you and I believe that you have no mistakes and no errors and no deficiencies and that you are alive and never die subhanak and that you know all things and nothing is hidden from you subhanak Allahumma and that you hear all things and nothing is hidden from you and, and, and the likes like this and to believe in his lordship and his command and his authority to glorify him in this manner because of his beautiful names and attributes of perfection that have no deficiency whatsoever whatsoever from any aspect subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik I glorify you in this manner while praising you and, thank, and thanking you. While praising you and thanking you. Praising you likewise for these beautiful, uh, for, for your beautiful names and attributes of perfection. And likewise praising you and thanking you for the blessings and the good that you have bestowed upon upon me. For the blessings and good that you have sp uh, bestowed upon me and all of, and all of mankind. So we see likewise from the benefit here that not only is there a tasbih mentioned, but likewise coupled with that is a tahmid. So there is the glorification and the freeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all defects and from all faults. And likewise there is a tahmid, the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this there is the affirmation of the attributes of, of perfection for him uh, alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, by gathering be between a tasbih with tamheed, uh, by gathering between the statement subhanaka Allahumma and the statement wa bihamdika with glorification and, g and gathering uh, the statement of glorification and declaring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be free from all needs and worthy of all praise and coupling this with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is in reality the foundation of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the belief of the Tawheed of Al Asma'i wal Sifat. The Tawheed of Al Asma'i wal Sifat. And that, that creed it has two principles. And how the people of the Sunnah they believe in the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's based upon these two principles Al Tanzih and uh, Al Ithbat. Al Tanzihu. What is bad to tanzi? A tanzi is to free Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all errors and all faults. 
and al isbat is to affirm all to affirm all of the attributes of perfection for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner befitting his majesty and this is the foundation of the creed and the proper understanding of the beautiful names and lofty and lofty attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tanzihun bila ta'til wa ithbatun bila tamthil that there is the freeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all deficiencies and from all needs and from all weaknesses and all defects without denying his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and affirmation is batun bila tamthil and to affirm the attributes of perfection for him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala without likening them to the creation meaning to affirm them in a manner befitting his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala not resembling the creation whatsoever and this is or and these two principles are found here in subhanaka subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik by making the tanzih and glorifying allah upon up of up of every deficiency and every foul statement that is ascribed to him like the statement the oppressors they mention about him that he has a son subhanaka allahumma subhanaka allahumma Glorified is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free of this claim that they make. He has no son. He has no son. And he has no wife. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala Allahu amma yaqulu al-zalimuna aluan kabira. So when he says subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Meaning I glorify you, O Allah, with praises and thanks and sanctify you. I glorify you free from having any deficiency or any defect whatsoever. I praise you for your attributes of perfection uh, that have no deficiency whatsoever from any aspect. And I praise you and thank you for your tremendous blessings that cannot be counted nor enumerated. Nor enumerated. After this, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ تبارك تفاعل من البركة يعني على وزن تفاعل تفاعل أي تبارك اسمك تبارك اسمك يعني blessed is your name uh, البركة كثرة الخير وبقاؤه ونماؤه يعني to have an abundance of goodness and that it would remain and that it would grow and continue and become great. And yeah, the blessing of something is that it has good, that it has goodness, and that it has khair, and that that khair, if it has barakah, it will remain and it will grow and it will become more and be greater. And like this, the blessings of this life and the hereafter, and all of the goodness in this life and the hereafter, is obtained uh, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by remembering His name. And by remembering His name, subhanahu wa ta'ala wa tabaraka smuka. And likewise, this has come uh, in the book of Allah in more than one verse. And for example, Blessed is the name of your Lord, the owner of majesty and honor. The owner of majesty and honor. And he blessed is the name of your Lord. So likewise, here we see in this uh, supplication, And blessed is your name. And blessed is your name, meaning high and lofty and full of blessing and goodness uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, all of the good in the heavens and the earth, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by calling on him alone and remembering his name, tabaraka wa ta'ala, one is able to, one is able to request and to obtain the goodness of this life and, and the hereafter by remembering the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tabaraka smuka, tabaraka Allah. Like this, Tabarak Allah, who has no Haritin, Tabarak and Ladi Biedi Hilmurk, Tabarak and Ladi Nazara, Ala Abidihi, El Furkana. And he blessed is Allah. This verb here is only used with Allah. One could never use this verb with another, uh, another, uh, another name. It's only Tabarak Allah, Tabarak Allah. One could not say Tabarak Fulan or so and so, Tabarak so and so. La. This, this, this verb here is for Allah alone, Tabarak Allah. Tabarak ismuka, yani tabarak Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tabarak rabbuka, tabarak ismuka, this is the supplication. So it begins in this manner, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak ismuka, meaning I glorify you and free you from all defects and all faults, uh, O Allah, and, and praising you, likewise for your beautiful names, uh, and perfect attributes and praising you and thanking you for your blessings and for the good bounties that you have bestowed upon me and likewise your name is the blessed name and blessed is your name 
and uh, full of blessing. Uh, and blessed is your name, and the blessings that are obtained by remembering you and mentioning you alone. Subhanahu, subhanahu, uh, subhanak Allahumma, wa bihamdika, wa tabaraka smuka. And then after this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, wa ta'ala jadduka, wa ta'ala jadduka. And high and lofty is your greatness and majesty. Ta'ala, ay ala, wartafa'a. Likewise, ta'ala, tafa'ulun min al-ulu. And ta'ala, well, there wasn't ta'ala. This means here to be high and lofty. High and lofty in greatness and majesty. Ta'ala, jadduka. Jadduka, ay alvamatuka. Ta'ala, jadduka, ay alvamatuka. Meaning that your greatness and majesty is high and lofty. And uh, high and lofty uh, above all others, and no one is higher than you. And the greatness, uh, and your greatness is greater than the, than all others. And your majesty and glory is uh, higher and loftier than all. And you are the highest and most high. Subhanahu, uh, Subhanahu wa Taala. He is the high. He is the highest and most high. So here we see this is uh, affirming the the greatness of Allah and His Majesty and His glory. Subhanahu wa ta'ala That there is nothing that is greater than him And that there is nothing that is greater than him Here it says Wa ta'ala jadduka uh, The word jad in the Arabic language It has it has three meanings And from them what is intended here Al-Azama Wa ta'ala jadduka ay azamatuka meaning, meaning your greatness High and lofty is your greatness Is your greatness And likewise this has come in the Quran وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا مَا تَخْوَذَ صَاحِبَةً وَلَا وَلَدًا And uh, verily, his, the greatness of our Lord is high and lofty, and He has not taken any uh, wife nor a child. And He has not taken any wife nor a child. Shahid, تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا That jad here, it means عظمة, the greatness and the majesty of our Lord is high and lofty, is most high and lofty. Another meaning of the word jid in the Arabic language, Abu al-Ab, the, the, the grandfather, the father of the father. He's known as al-jid, but that's not what is intended here. And likewise, another uh, meaning of the word uh, al-jid in the Arabic language is al-halv, wal-naseeb, wal And to have a portion of the dunya and to have some wealth or prosperity in this life. And likewise, this has come in another uh, supplication that has been mentioned for the supplications after the salah, and likewise from the supplications of al rukur uh, rising from rukur that uh, has come. Wala yanfa'u dal jaddi min kal jaddu, and the one who has a great portion of prosperity and wealth will not benefit his wealth and benefit uh, his wealth and prosperity will not benefit him against you, and the benefit. The, the one who has wealth and prosperity and a great portion of this life, this will not benefit him against Allah. And that's the meaning here. So we see that this word al-jid has three meanings in the Arabic language, al alvama and that's what is intended here, greatness and majesty. The other meaning is uh, grandfather, al uh, Jed Abu Ab, and the other meaning is Al Havu Wal Nasib Abu Ghina, and a prosperity and a great portion from the affairs of this life. But what is intended here, and the supplication, Wa Taala Jaduka Ay Alva Matuka, and uh, high and lofty is your greatness, uh, is your greatness and your majesty, meaning that Allah He is the Most High and He is the Most Great. And there is nothing higher than him or greater than him. And he is high and lofty himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, above his throne in a manner befitting his majesty. And likewise, his authority and power is high. And no one has control uh, over anything in his dominion except with his permission. And he is the one who has authority and uh, charge and power over all of his creation and over all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, he is the most high in nobility and honor uh, and majesty and greatness. So therefore, a believer, he mentions it like this. Remembering these affairs, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. I glorify you and, for, and, and I glorify you and believe that you have no deficiencies and no needs and no wants whatsoever. You have no defects whatsoever. Subhanaka, oh, oh, oh Allah, Allahumma wa bihamdika. And I praise you. 
and thank you, praise you and thank you. And blessed is your name. And all good comes from remembering you and mentioning your name. And you are the one who is blessed and blessings come from you. All blessings come from Allah. And any good that one has, it came from Allah alone. And high and lofty is your greatness and majesty. Meaning there is none greater than you. And there is no one who is higher and more lofty than you. Not in power and authority, not in command, not in honor and respect. And he himself, he is high above his throne, above the creation in a manner befitting his majesty. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this leads to the closing portion of the supplication. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, wa la ilaha ghayruk. And there is none worthy of worship except for you. And this is uh, the... This is very beautiful how it closes in this manner. After mentioning all these affairs related to the beautiful names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, and likewise remembering His Rububiyya and His Lordship and His Greatness and His Majesty, remembering uh, Tawheed and Ilmi, the knowledge based aspect of it, Tawheed, now the supplication it closes with Tawheed al Amadi. And Tawheed al Amadi and with uh, the Tawheed of worship, La ilaha ghayruk. So long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He alone is the one who is alive and never dies, and He alone is the one who is free of all needs, worthy of all praise. He alone is the one who uh, has no defects and uh, no faults whatsoever. He alone is the one who has the absolute attributes of perfection with no deficiency whatsoever from any aspect. He alone is the one who provides the good and the blessings. They all come from Him alone. And by calling on Him alone and remembering His names, the blessing and the goodness of this life and the hereafter can be obtained from Him alone because the dominion belongs to Him alone and He is the Creator alone and He is the one who has given everything its shape and its form and His power is supreme and his authority is ultimate and he is the most high and lofty above his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who remembers all of this he will remember that great statement and creed and foundation of his belief la wa la ilaha ghayruk and there is none and, and there is nothing worthy of worship beside you. And there is nothing worthy of worship beside you. So we see that this opening supplication here is very concise, but very beautiful and beneficial for the one who ponder, ponders over it. And it entail, and it entails and contains all aspects of it. Tawheed, Tawheed al-Arrububiyya, wa Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, wa Sifat, wa Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed al all of this is contained here. So if a believer, he were to learn the meanings of these statements and then to ponder over them before he opens up the prayer. Yani whenever, whenever he opens up the prayer, beginning with the takbir and understanding what that means and then likewise... Uh, uh, learning what the supplication means and stating it with sincerity and true faith, understanding and contemplating over the meanings, and then after that, reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. All of this is a means to open the heart and to open the prayer in the best manner and to have true submission and humbleness and humility. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with sincere and true faith and with the light of ad iman and truthfulness and ikhlas. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم